Why, hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I kind of wanted to do more of a discussion video where we're basically going to be reading out the 3.2 Balance Manifesto uh, regarding jewels and ailments. So GDG is going to be kind of introducing, I think they said once a day, maybe once every couple of days, they'll be dropping another manifesto. They have five that they're going over. Uh, today is going to be all about jewels. Now, I initially read over this on stream yesterday. Um, I was a little bit under the weather, so it kind of kind of really took me back. There was a really high high, and then there was a really low low for me. Uh, and we're going to talk about that right now. But first, we're going to go over and just kind of read through it. It's not very long. All right. <clears throat> so for clarification, this is going to cover your standard jewels. So like your Viridian, your Crimson, and your Cobalt, you can see here. Uh, this is also going to talk about unique jewels. Um, so, you know, the rarity that's uh, above uh, yellow, right? And then it's also going to encompass some of the Abyssal Jewels as well. So, uh, in our upcoming 3.2 expansion, we're making a number of balance changes that we will present over several balance manifestos. Uh, each covers an individual topic, so that's kind of what I was talking about before. Today is all about Jewels. Jewels have modifiers that provide a problem. Jewels have modifiers that provide various forms of ailment avoidance or protection. However, I literally did not even know this actually uh, however because their current values are moderately low you need to often stack several jewels in order to have adequate levels of protection uh, we feel this is an excessive amount of investment for how necessary ailment mitigation is to a character's build real fast talking on this i can't imagine because i know people do this uh, i can't imagine how people go through with like stacking ailment avoidance in their build because i'm a very simple guy you guys know you play my builds Purity of elements, right? I mean, I can completely understand running like purity of elements until you get full ailment avoidance and then you drop purity of elements. And that's kind of cool because that adds like a chase for you. You kind of have like a clear objective that you're aiming towards. Um, but anyway, let's keep reading. The issue has been uh, exacerbated by some of these mods being gated behind corruption, making them more expensive and difficult to acquire. Solution, we're expanding the pool of mods available on magic and rare jewels and making their modifiers uh, values more generous so that players have access to sources of ailment mitigation with less investment. Regular jewels that are not abyss or cluster now have mods that provide reduced duration or reduced effect for a wider variety of ailments than before. Abyssal jewels now have mods that provide avoidance. Now my only concern with this is it was virtually, I am going to say impossible, not impossible but very unethical um, to craft your own jewel normally, right? Previously, with the old harvest system, where we had like reforge fire, fire modifiers are more likely to appear, it was not as bad. With them removing that and fossils basically being the only way, I don't really think people are going to be fossil spamming jewels. I like to look at this also from like an SSF point of view. I try to look at it from multiple points of view, and I am just a little concerned at how like how realistic this is going to be now if i guess the standard is going to be like your jewel is going to have ailment avoidance a life roll an es roll some type of defensive roll and that's it that's two points on the tree for you're gonna to have to spec multiple for that i like the direction it's just along with a lot of people i am concerned about diluting the mod pool for already extremely rare to find jewels let's keep going this means that jewels should be a more reliable and less uh, expensive source of ailment mitigation through their higher mod values and better variety of mods. Problem. Uh, let's see. Many unique jewels are not exciting to find. There are a few reasons for this. In most cases, they are simply underpowered or apply to a too narrow window of usage or both. There are also many corruption-only jewels that do not fulfill a good purpose. So corruption-only would be ones like minus one endurance charge or there, there's some really weird ones that definitely work they're just very niche previously we were hesitant to revisit unique tools and improve them beyond their initial design because many of their themes are somewhat rigid in nature meaning there is little room to improve improve them without completely remaking them as an example this is the fireborn crimson jewel it has no values that we could increase to make it more useful it simply changes the damage type within a radius which was very limited uh, which has very limited opportunities for use any improvements we could make to this jewel would have to fundamentally change its identity. Therefore, we would essentially remove the jewel in its current form. Solution. We're making it so that every unique jewel that drops is rare and highly desirable. When I read this, I laughed. Um, I don't laugh in disrespect. I laugh because every unique jewel that drops is very rare and highly desirable. Path of Exile I play is 95% of uniques that drop are 
Alk shards. So this is such a bold statement for me to read. This actually got me very excited. Now there's a there's a whole entire other side of this where basically you know the casual player base that don't play as much are not about the zoom clear speed meta and just kind of play for fun. Um, feel like they're not going to be able to acquire these right. So there's definitely a coin flip. Um, I'm going to side towards the more unique style, which is like not unique style, but I'm curious for this because. I can't tell you how many times I see jewels drop and all you do is hover over it. And if it's a very specific base that if you're very casual, you won't even know if it's good or not. Um, you just would never pick it up. I am pretty excited to see more dopamine from mapping. Um, there is a negative to this, so just hold on. But personally, I think this is good. Um, there's a lot of memes going around with, you know, on the PoE Reddit about, you know, Problem, unique jewels are shit. Solution, we remove them. <laughs> I personally want to see loot being removed and pulled away from the game. I don't think we need as much loot as we have. I just think that there's a very fine line on how they address it. And obviously I you know, don't have any extra inside information, but I think it's going in the right direction. I just won't know until I actually get to uh, kind of mess around with it. This means that many existing uh, unique jewels have been removed from the drop pool. The intention is that now when you find a unique jewel, it should almost always be a very positive experience. To make jewel drop special, we've designed a new set of unique jewels that are powerful chase items. These can drop from the core pool. You can learn more about these in the upcoming announcement livestream for 3.2 expansion. With that uh, said, there are some unique jewels that were still useful for a subset of players because they had build enabling modifiers or very unique, uh, very niche uses like brute force solution or other attribute uh, transforming jewels. Instead of getting rid of these, we've made them corruption only unique jewels. We feel this has benefits for both players who want them and for players who do not, as generally players who do not want them won't come across them as core drops and players who do want them can actively pursue them. I really like this. This basically states that um, the jewels that are very important to people's builds that are not really very expensive are removed from the drop table and can now be deterministically acquired via vol orbs. It might take you five, it might take you a hundred, but it's still in the game. At least from an SSF point of view, I do believe you can still get some attribute transforming jewels with div cards. I could be wrong, um, but I don't know. I, I, I like the direction that they're going in. I was very happy with this. So, so far I'm happy. Because when you split the pool like that, you can keep the unique jewels that are you know, important for builds and then gate them behind corruption so that they're not diluting the actual unique pool that drops. Uh, some build enabling unique jewels can now be found from more deterministic sources. One example is combat focus, which can be obtained through a vendor recipe. Some other build enabling jewels that affect golems can no longer drop, but can be found from other more deterministic source. While we want you to discover this new source during uh, on your own, blah, 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 uh, we will clarify that these jewels do not come from vendor recipes. Now, personally, I, you know, I read everything with the exception of the ailment avoidance potentially diluting the mod pool. I was pretty happy. And then I read this next paragraph. Our goal is that finding a unique jewel is an exciting experience. The unique jewels that drop naturally should be those that are very valuable with a broad appeal to the average player, either to use in your own build or to trade to someone else. We've worked towards this goal by removing uninteresting unique jewels, adding more unique or adding more chase unique jewels and moving jewels that do appeal to a smaller subset of other players to a place so they can be pursued by choice. Problem. Many of the unique jewels that are currently granted through quest rewards are not very desirable. <laughs> Additionally, because they're offered to all players who make their way through the campaign, they're extremely common which inhibits them from having value or being meaningful items to find. We have also come to feel it is thematically incorrect to offer unique items as quest rewards as it under, uh, undermines their feeling of uniqueness and prestige. This line is kind of cool. It just is kind of weird that it's coming in so late into the game, right? Um, solution. Unique jewels will no longer be offered as quest rewards. Most of the jewels that were previously offered have been moved entirely though some important ones have had their effects preserved in the form of uh, new unique items or being added to the pool of rollable jewel modifiers. Now, the reason I bring this up 
is because of our friend here, Conqueror's Efficiency. Ever since they removed Mana Reservation Efficiency on the Aura Cluster that I know a lot of your master, that a lot of you guys are aware of, we have used Conqueror's Efficiency in my Righteous Fire build guides to be able to fit in your triple 50% Aura. Without this, you can still run it, but you're literally zero MP. And I personally thought the design of Conqueror's Efficiency was really good because... And again, I understand that this is not in line with their current... I don't want to say the term vision, but it's the term vision, right? I don't mean it in a, in a disrespectful way. They want them to feel more unique. They don't want to be offered as a quest reward. But the reason I like Conqueror's Efficiency is, as a content creator, it's very annoying to create content on something that has a, like a, a flexible price, right? For example, Maven Boots at the beginning of launch on League Star are anywhere from... 10 divines to 5 divines and then 2 weeks later they're like 5 chaos, right? I want something that's concrete that works whether you're on console, SSF, uh, PC, hardcore, it does not matter. Conquer's efficiency is deterministic. You acquire that tiny bit of mana reservation efficiency which makes everything work. And this is not like, oh I'm crying because the build got nerfed. It's more like if you're not running purity of elements, then it's going to be a lot less fun because now you have to redo a bunch of stuff. So I really hope that we do get small amounts of mana reservation, whether it's on something else that they said that they brought back or you can roll it on a rare jewel. But I feel like they're not going to put mana reservation efficiency on rare jewels because I don't know, that would be really broken, I feel. But if they did, that would be really cool. We'll see. Anyway, moving on. Um... Uh, let's see, these quest rewards now offer a random rare jewel uh, because the rewards are not static like unique jewels were. Uh, they may have a better chance of being useful to the receiver or something that may be valuable to trade uh, to others. At the very least, they should be less predictable. Summary, uh, players should no longer be burdened with predictable unique jewel quest rewards, but will not entirely miss out on some of the valuable aspects they did have. Conclusion, jewels should be more exciting than before and provide a better source of ailment mitigation than they were in 3.19. Jewels with effects that were uh, that are useful only to a subset of players should still be attainable while moving them away from uh, moving them out of the way of players who aren't interested in them. All right, so pretty much that's really all I have to say. Uh, I'm really curious on what you guys kind of feel about that. And again, before we start overreacting to things, I know DGG has <laughs> have really kind of done some interesting things with their game, but. This is part one of five on the balance manifesto. And then we basically have like a whole expansion on top of that. So it's not really fair to make a gigantic stink about two to 4% mana reservation efficiency when there's a whole spectrum of things to potentially be gained, right? I'm simply being prepared for what may or may not be in the future, right? Anyway, though, that's pretty much about it. Uh, if you guys like the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day, but Mondays at twitch.tv actually, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all later.